Hello, this is a pathology specimen comprising the lungs, the trachea, the main bronchi, and you can see some very enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes in this region. If we look at the centimeter scale, we will see that the entire specimen spanning from the right to the left lung is really only about 16 centimeters in maximal dimension. So it's rather small, and this is actually taken from a child. Let's turn this around, and we can also see here a little bit more clearly the cut surface of the enlarged lymph nodes. Uh, here is where they interface with the lung parenchyma. And you can see that the nodes are actually kind of adherent to one another, and hence they are matted. And also the cut surface looks pale and tan and shows a rather homogeneous, what we call a fish flesh appearance. Again, we can see that the nodes are adherent to one another. We don't see any obvious areas of necrosis. So the main differential diagnosis uh, in this uh, picture when we see these enlarged matted lymph nodes would be infectious conditions, for example, TB. TB generally wouldn't give this kind of fish flesh appearance. And the other differential, of course, is malignancy. So in the mediastinum, malignancies in children would include germ cell tumors, uh, would also include certain types of lymphomas, particularly Hodgkin lymphoma. And this is an example of Hodgkin lymphoma. Hodgkin lymphoma has a bimodal peak in terms of age group. So one peak occurs in childhood or in young adulthood. So teenagers, young adults and children can also get this condition. And then the other peak is a little bit towards the elderly age group, perhaps in the mid-50s and above. It tends to involve or spread according to contiguous sites. So cervical lymph nodes are very frequently involved. The mediastinal lymph nodes, such as you saw in this case, are also quite frequently involved. And they don't tend to spread uh, discontinuously in the sense that they move from one anatomical site to an adjacent or a close-by anatomical site, and that's how it spreads. And sometimes the patients may present with B symptoms, which include loss of weight, night sweats and fever. And uh, this is present in just about under half of the cases. And it generally has a good prognosis. It responds well to treatment for low-stage disease. Microscopically, the diagnostic features are the presence of these Reed-Sternberg cells, like here. And sometimes they are also known as Hodgkin Reed-Sternberg cells or Hodgkin cells if they are mononuclear or meaning that they have one nucleus. Classical Reed-Sternberg cells have a bilobed nucleus or they have two nuclei with a very prominent nucleolus each and sometimes they can even be multinucleated. So we can see one example here, an example here and one more example here. And here is yet another example of a Reed-Sternberg cell. These are the neoplastic cells in Hodgkin lymphoma, and they are thought to be uh, actually B lymphocytes that have some genetic defects. So there are several subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma, but in the classical Hodgkin lymphoma types, they all have these Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cells. So in summary, we have a specimen that comprises both the lungs, the trachea, the main bronchi, and very enlarged matted mediastinal lymph nodes that have a fleshy, homogeneous cut surface. And this is a classical appearance of Hodgkin lymphoma.